Hey hey, today in our video, The Humankind. As I said before, today we're gonna be reviewing the humankind. So, the essence of the civilization begins in a familiar way. To Saul and the orchestral accompaniment, the future leader of the nation selects the condition for his future people, sets the size of the world, the speed of the game, the difficulty, which primarily affects the intelligence of artificial intelligence and of course sets the numbers of contenders for the title of the ruling empire. But the underlying culture has not been offered, it will have to be chosen a little later. And finally, the great path of our state begins. It is the Neolithic era where nomadic tribes are looking for their first home, which will someday become the capital of the whole world, or enslaved province for a more powerful empire. So in the main menu you will find unexpected elements for the global strategies, the customization, for my taste, playing for a leader created by yourself under the self-chosen coat of arm is much more interesting than matching existing leaders to your character in real life. Perhaps the estate speaks in me. But such trifles influence immersion very strongly. And the lobby. You can also customize the avatar and character of the ruler. You have to decide on the archetype, beliefs and advantages. Or, I advise leave the fields untouched and return to them after the first successful game. After the game, there will also be an opportunity to enjoy the success. Humankind has trophies and achievements. There are 5 speeds in the game. The Blitz with the 75 moves, the Fast with the 150 moves, the Normal one with the 300 moves, Slow 450 moves and Infinite 600 moves. This is such a finite infinity, the authors of Humankind accidentally raised an untouched philosophical virgin land. At the Odyssey of the people under your rule begins in the Stone Age. A tribe of hunter-gatherers wanders around the map in the search of something useful. Either they manage to collect food, then acquire new knowledge or discover a miracle of nature, such as for example the Great Barrier Reef. Each find gives the bonuses. The same food increases the size of the tribe instead of the squad. Two tree and so on appear and all this happens even before the foundation of the first city that is the player gets time to explore the surroundings and understand where it's better to put down roots meanwhile resources are accumulating the population is growing science points are dripping to discover the technologies although there is still no trace of an empire the mechanics of battles are introduced by skimshers with the mammoths, bears, deers and other animals. Unlike Endless Legends, squads are finally allowed to be controlled directly rather than giving order in advance. But the rest is familiar. We occupy the hills to go to the rear, use the forest as a shelter. The surprise in the strategy is that the equal units are capable of completely destroying each other, not always someone remains on the battlefield. Some actions on the map are converted to the era points. For example, to say goodbye to the Stone Age and enter the Asian Void, you need to increase the number of your people to 5. Explore 10 points of scientific interest or kill 3 animals. Everyone decides for himself which way is more convenient. And then the choice of the first culture takes place. This mechanic is important, features of humankind. At the beginning of the each of the 6 years, the game offers a dozen factions with unique bosses. Let's say Mycin use and managed fortification and missteps, powerful melee soldiers, Egypt in a strong production, Babylon has in a five mathematicians, and Hrappa gets a hard start in agriculture and therefore in population growth. If you haven't defined a site for yourself, it is better to rush the start of an year as soon as possible, because the culture occupied by the rival can no longer be appropriated. After the end of antiquity, having collected enough era points, you open the classic period and so on until the information era. Moreover, the choice of a new culture does no negative that benefits the previous one. You can start building an empire from the same Hrappa, then switch to Rome or Greece. But the initial increase in food will not go anywhere, just the others will be added to some advantages. On the other hand, no one bothers to abandon the chain of cultures and stay at the same stage of development. If its bonuses are enough for you, there are more than 10,000 such combinations available in the game. Humankind is all about the stability. Each era you have a difficult choice for which civilization to play. 
Of course you can stay the same, but more often it's more interesting to combine development on the go. path with the human guide through the years was quite unexpected, in the name tribe turned into Babylonians. After it upgraded into Greeks, and then the inhibits suddenly realized themselves French. Realism in the game is not to be expected. My development is still not so shocking because by era of the industrialization it was possible to turn into the Zulu while making the choice between them and the Russians. The later, by the way, easily involved in the USSR. The main thing is to get the present. The head is spinning from the such transformation, but there is definitely a charm in this. The choice of culture or feature, in fact a nation, will depend only on the current situation on the map. If in the previous era you peacefully pumped sins and rebuilt its cities, then by the next one you can easily choose a warlike civilization and attack your neighbors or pick up such a nation that will more successfully fight off the attackers thanks to a strong unit or building. Adaptation is the main thing when choosing further development between the Eras. It is unlikely that the states bordering on you will be happy about success in the scientific field from period to period, so do not forget about the defense and the development of perks that allow you to fight. Civilization players are doomed to follow the beaten path. You hire a scout, another scout, process cell and constantly unlock the same skills from the party to party. Each nation builds the same buildings and the number of combinations playable in the online game is rapidly decreasing from the version to version. In humankind, you'll never know which culture you will end up with. Even if you have a plan, your opponent will always be able to take away the desired nation by entertaining the era one turn earlier. In addition, due to this flexibility, replayable also increases. The developers have promised one point million combination of the crops, so you're unlikely to have time to get bored. I'm not going to develop into the mechanic and spoiler the game. I believe that humankind will undermine the creability of civilization, at least in the community of hardcore strategies. Many will face a difficult choice of what to kill the weekend for an old game or this bright new product. Yes, it will take weeks to figure out the interests and even cooler. Even in companies of different skill, everyone will be approximately equal terms. It is also important that the game is simply beautiful. This is also flexible graphics, which is calculators will put on minimum salaries and only Boeing at minimum salary at the music accompaniment which was recorded for Amplitude Studios by a real orchestra. A narrative even that add to the game and customization that to which you feel the involvement in development of humanity on the screen. Humankind turned out to be very soulful. I don't know how cool it will be in the hands of professional strategists and I'm not going to say about the current balance, for this you need to test the network games, but I feel that in this regard, the standard civilization, which has to be finished by the hand of the modders, will also remain far behind.